Hello, this video is going to be a look at Finding Dory, the big golden book version. I will be reading through this in just a moment, so if you don't want to be spoiled of anything, you should definitely not watch the rest of this video, but I will give you a look around of the front, back, and inside cover before I do start reading. So anyway, let's get down to it. All right, so here is a look at the book, front and back, inside cover before I start reading. You have Dory, Nemo, Marlin, Destiny, Mr. A, Hank, Bailey. On the side, it says Disney Pixar Finding Dory right there, and also in blue text right there. On the right, it says Golden Books, and on the back cover, uh, Dory the Forgetful Fish helped Marlin find his son Nemo. Now it's time for her to find her parents, and this book is $9.99. So, inside cover, like any other golden book, you could write your name right there, and I am going to start reading right now. So, if you don't want to be spoiled of anything, you should definitely stop watching. So, here we go. Dory was a happy young fish. She lived in an underwater home with her parents, Jenny and Charlie. But Dory had one little problem. Hi, I'm Dory. I suffer from short-term memory loss. To help keep Dory safe, her parents taught her to tell others that she had a hard time remembering things. One day, a strong current and undertow carried Dory far from home. Where are your parents? asked a passing fish. I can't remember, replied Dory. Dory told herself to just keep swimming. As the years went by, Dory forgot what she was looking for. Far out in the ocean, Dory met a clownfish named Marlin. She helped him find his lost son, Nemo. Through their adventures together, the fish became great friends. Dory joined Marlin and Nemo in the coral reef and lived next door to their anemone. Dory had a home again. Marlin and Nemo loved Dory and kept her safe. But one afternoon, a strong current spun Dory around and dropped her into the sand. She felt woozy and confused. The jewel of Morro Bay, California, she murmured. When Dory felt better, Nemo told her what she had said. All at once, memories came rushing back. I remember my family, Dory shouted. We have to find them. Dory, Marlin, and Nemo <laughs> rode the ocean currents all the way to Morro Bay, California. Mom, Dad yelled Dory when they arrived. Dory had been here before. She told some hermit crabs she was looking for her parents, two blue tangs named Jenny and Charlie. Jenny, Charlie, cried Dory. Shh, said the hermit crabs. A giant squid, bothered by all the yelling, chased the three friends. They swam into a kelp forest to escape. Ooh. Dory looked for someone who could help them. She heard a woman's voice above the water calling, won't you please join us? Marlin and Nima followed Dory to the surface. Welcome to the Marine Life Institute, boomed the woman's voice through a speaker. We believe in rescue, rehabilitation, and release. Suddenly, Dory was pulled out of the water. <laughs> Dory was tagged and put in quarantine, an area for sick or injured fish. She asked an octopus named Hank about the Jewel of Morro Bay. That's this place, the Marine Life Institute. You're here, he said. Hank noticed that Dory had a tag on her fin, and the tag meant she'd soon be transported to an aquarium in Cleveland. Hank desperately wanted to go there. Dory said she'd give him the tag if he helped her find her parents. Dory. Hank took Dory to a map of exhibits. Dory spotted a purple shell. Wait, is he? Oh, never mind. I thought I saw something. Dory spotted a purple shell on the map. That brought back another memory. Dory recalled lining up she shells with her parents. Her mom loved the purple ones. My home had a purple shell, she told Hank. She told Hank. Moments later, a human carrying a bucket of fish came down the hall. Dory leaped into the bucket as Hank dashed out of sight. Dory and Hank ended up in a pool with a whale shark named Destiny. The whale shark recognized Dory. We were pipe pals, Destiny told Dory. They used to talk to each other through the pipes. Dory was from the open ocean exhibit. Can you take me there, asked Dory. Destiny said Dory could get there through the pipes, but Dory was worried that she'd get lost. Bailey, a beluga whale, could have guided her, but he said his echolocation wasn't working. There's no other way, said Hank. Dory remembered her, Dory remembered her dad saying, there's always another way. There she spotted a stroller across from Destiny's pool. She had found another way. 
Hank pushed the stroller while Dory navigated, but after a few wrong turns, Dory and Hank crashed into the touch pool. It was a nightmare. Little hands jabbed at them from every direction. Dory remembered her parents saying, just keep swimming. As Dory led Hank across the pool, somebody poked Hank and caused him to release his ink. <laughs> the water turned black and scared all the kids away. When Dory and Hank surfaced, they saw the open ocean exhibit. It was straight ahead. Meanwhile, Marlin and Nemo were trying to get inside the Institute to find Dory. Luckily, a loon named Becky agreed to fly them in. Drop us anywhere, shouted Marlin. Becky hung the bucket on a tree branch and swooped to the ground for a snack. The branch catapulted Marlin and Nemo into a small tank in the gift shop. <laughs> Nothing was going right. What would Dory do, they both asked. The two clownfish noticed a line of jumping fountains across the plaza. Without another thought, they leaped out of the tank and hopped along the jet streams. At the same moment, Dory and Hank were at the top of the huge open ocean tank. Looks like this is it, kids, said Hank. I have a trunk. Oh, I have a truck to catch. Dory handed him the tag. You know, I think I'm going to remember you, she said. Then she swam off to find her family. Dory followed a line of shells to her home. Mom, Dad, she yelled, but no one was there. Memories flooded back. Dory's parents had warned Dory's parents had warned her about the undertow, but one evening she swam out to get a purple shell for her mom. Dory went too close to the undertow and was pulled away. Dory gasped. It was my fault. My parents. I lost them. Oh. Oh. That is sad. Okay. A, uh, a crab told Dory that all the blue tanks had been taken to quarantine. They're being shipped on a truck to Cleveland at the crack of dawn, he said. Dory had to get back to quarantine fast. Go through the pipes, said another crab. Two lefts and a right. Simple. Dory bravely entered the maze of pipes, but she was soon lost. Then she remembered her pipe pal and called for help. Destin oh. Destiny! I was gonna like say it weird. Destiny asked Bailey to try using his echolocation to help Dory. He sent out a call and listened, and listened for its echo. Little by little, the pipes came into focus. It's working, Bailey shouted. Then he saw Dory. Tell her to go left. Oh man. I don't know what this sounds like. Um. <laughs> Ooh. So, ah, man. Ooh. But something else was in the pipes, too, and it was heading right for Dory. Dory screamed. Oh, no, said Bailey. It's eating her. Oh, Dory. Destiny sobbed, but Dory couldn't have been happier. It was Marlin and Nemo. How did you two find me? Asked Dory. We were having a very hard time, said Marlin, until Nemo asked, what would Dory do? Ooh. WWDD. Dory, Marlin, and Nemo made it into the blue tang tank in quarantine. Dory's parents weren't there. They came here looking for you, said a fish, but they never came back. That was years ago. Dory was stunned. They're gone. Just as the blue tangs were about to be loaded onto the truck bound for Cleveland, Hank scooped up Dory. Then a human grabbed Hank, causing him to drop her. She slipped down a drain that led to the ocean. Gosh. Once again, Dory was alone. She felt hopeless. Then she remembered Nemo's words. What would Dory do? Dory followed a path of shells. She saw two fish swimming towards her. Dory, you're here. You found us, said Jenny. What? Her parents explained that when she'd gotten caught in the undertow, they went looking for her in quarantine. When they didn't find her there, they went to search for her in the ocean. Have you been by yourself all these years? Asked Charlie. Suddenly, Dory remembered Marlin and Nemo. She had to get them out of the blue tank tank and off that truck. <laughs> That's funny. They did the exact same thing. Dory and her parents swarmed. Oh, Dory and her parents swam to the surface just as the truck pulled away. She, she called to Destiny and Bailey, and they both jumped into the ocean to help. Bailey used his echolocation. Man, again. Ooh. <laughs> I hope this sounds completely different in the movie because I, I just feel like I'm doing it wrong. The truck was heading for a bridge. Dory needed a plan. She asked herself again, what would Dory do? When she saw a group of playful otters under the bridge, Dory had a plan. 
The otters were happy to help. They climbed up to the road, then Destiny flipped Dory onto the highway. The otters caught her, and on Dory's cue, they all embraced. Traffic came to a stop as drivers admired the cuddly creatures. One of the otters opened the back door of the truck and brought Dory inside. You came back, shouted Nemo. Of course, said Dory, your family. Marlin called for Becky to fly them out of the truck. But the loon flew off with only Marlin and Nemo. Dory and Hank were still on their way to Cleveland. <laughs> Dory found another way out of the truck through the skylight. Hank scared off the driver and grabbed the wheel. He put Dory in a cup on the dashboard. I steer, you navigate, said Hank. The two friends turned the truck around and drove it into the ocean. And Dory, her parents, Marlin, Nemo, Hank, Destiny, and Bailey were all reunited. Not long after, everybody was living, living happily together in the coral reef. Hank, Destiny, and Bailey enjoyed teaching at the school. And Dory loved playing hide and seek with her parents, just like they'd done when she was little. At last, surrounded by her family and friends, Dory was truly home. One day, Marlin followed Dory to the edge of the reef. The two gazed out at the peaceful open ocean. Wow, said Marlin, it really is quite a view. Dory smiled. Unforgettable. So that's Finding Dory. That was pretty cute. You know what I, I've been liking about these Pixar movies is that they don't really have these bad villain type of characters. Or at least Inside Out really didn't. Good Dinosaur was more like of a fight against nature and then this is just a series of unfortunate events trying to find their way out and also find Dory's parents. And it's cool. And I can't wait to see this in theaters. Uh, I think it's, yeah, next month. So anyway, nice read. Uh, definitely has me uh, wanting to see it in theaters now. So anyway, uh, this is the big golden book version. I'm also going to do the little golden book version after this one. So look out for that video as well. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this. Again, this was just a little reading and whatnot of uh, Finding Dory uh, for the big golden book. Uh, I will see you all later and thanks for watching.